Hi, my name is Don Chang and I am a Canadian animator based in Japan. Working with hand-drawn animation involves filling out time sheets, sometimes called exposure sheets or dope sheets in the West. And today we will look at time sheet basics, then how to create camera work such as pans, skip pans, memory pans, track up and backs, quick track up and backs, follows, slides, and digital track up and backs. Timesheets are used by the layout artist and animator to physically organize the animation, plan out camera work, and give instructions to artists and the compositor further down the pipeline. Think of a timeline in an animation software, but paper. They are absolutely essential when there is more than a single person working on a project. I often get asked about them, so I'll do my best trying to explain filling them out. Since I mostly work in Japan nowadays, this video is aimed at those who are also working here or want to work here. But the information here should still be useful to anyone trying to level up their animation ability. Note that the method of filling out timesheets vary country to country, studio to studio, and even artist to artist within the same studio. So we have this cut over here. And this is the layout for it. There are animation cell levels for the character's body and water refraction effect at her feet on layers B and C, as well as a flock of birds which are on another sheet of paper, not pictured here, on layer A. There are two underlays, which are background elements that go above or below an animation layer, called books in Japanese, and are labeled as so. And here is the timesheet for that cut. I will provide a download for the timesheet and standard widescreen layout template below. At the top, we fill out the episode number, the title of the work, and the scene number, called a cut in Japanese. Then, the time of the shot in seconds plus frames, your name, and the page number. Note that in Asia, the numerator and denominator are flipped. Below that, we have a space for memos and notes. We will go more into this later. Below that, we have different columns for the keyframes. Note that in Japan, the A cell is at the bottom, which is the opposite of how it works in certain countries. Then, there is a column for audio such as voice and effects, and this is how the audio is written and timed, but we will explore more about lip syncing in a later guide. Next to that is a space for the cleanup and in-between artists to use. Note that in Japan, the in-between drawings are renumbered, which is different from the West. Sometimes your directors can take up this space to retime your animation and the animator themselves can use that space if they need more layers, but let's ignore the in-betweens for now. And lastly, we have a space for the camera work. More on this later. Each row here represents one frame and solid lines separate the sheets into 24 frames for one second blocks. Here the order of the books, aka overlays and underlays in regard to the animation layers are written. The keyframes are circled and numbered and in-betweens are indicated by a dash. When repeating or looping animation, use circles to indicate the in-betweens. When a cell is not exposed, indicate that with an X. Lastly, at the end, indicate the end of the cut by hatching it out. When you are working on a cut, have the timesheet beside you and use it to plan out when, where, and for how long a drawing is exposed for, and to quickly visualize and time out your animation as well as the other scene elements. Now let's spice up our shot with camera work. By trucking, moving the camera horizontally, or panning, rotating the camera horizontally, we create a pan. In the layout, draw the beginning and end frame of the camera move and label it A and B respectively. Draw in an arrow to indicate the movement of the camera. In the timesheet, write a note for it in the memo area, pan A to B. In the camera work column, draw a vertical line with the start and end of the move indicated by a horizontal line, and label the two ends. In our case, this pen will take 4 seconds. Label our diagram with a small note beside it like so. Note that if you don't use the original frame from the layout in the camera move, make sure to cross it out, like so. There are also some other versions of the pan to know. One would be the skip pan or follow pan. This is when we have a normal size animation cell level and an oversized background element. We would have the cell layer be fixed while only the background pans. Here are my animation keys. 
and here is the BG layout. In the layout, designate the start and end position of the pen and indicate the movement of the camera frame by frame using notched spacing lines. Number the first and last position with Arabic numerals. In the timesheet, make a memo, A cell skip pen, to indicate that the A cell is fixed. In the camera work column, write the timing of the camera move frame by frame with Arabic numerals and circle the first and last camera position or any other key camera positions. I know there's a bokeh effect on the background, but let's ignore that for now. Another type of pen is the memory pen, which is like the tsuki pen, but both the cell levels and the background elements are oversized, and you would pen both elements similar to a normal pen in order to keep the camera on the action. In the layout, we would figure out the position and the timing of the camera move, just like the tsuki pen. And in the timesheet, we'd write a memo, A cell memory pen, to indicate that the action is centered on the A cell, and create a diagram in the camera work column. By dollying our camera, moving it forwards and backwards, we can create track ups and track backs. For a track up, draw and indicate the beginning and end frame of the camera move like so in the layout. Label the start and end frame with A and B respectively. In the timesheet, we write a memo, track up A to B, and create a diagram similar to the pans in the camera work column. For track backs, we do the same thing but just reverse the movement. Another version of the track back is the quick track back. This is much faster and start with a much tighter frame than the standard track back. Same thing applies for a quick truck up. The quick track back also requires the timing of the fairing, which is the slow down cushioning effect. In the layout, we draw the camera frame like with a normal track back, but around the end of the move, we state where we want the shot to start cushioning and mark it with katakana a. In the timesheet, we write a memo, and in the camera work column, we will make the pen last about a second, which the katakana a fairing point reached at around 6 frames. A follow is a camera move where the camera follows an animation cell layer that moves past a background element. In this shot, we want this car on layer A to look as if it is driving by having the background pull to screen right. There are two ways to do this and they have the same end result. One way is to move the cell layer and the camera towards screen left at the same time with the background fixed. Where we can have the cell layer and the camera fixed with the background pulling screen right. For the first option, we write A cell follow 3 mm slash comma or 3 mm per frame. And we draw an arrow pointed left for the cell and camera move direction. At the bottom, we write die meaning BG and an arrow for the direction of that movement. We write the same thing in our timesheet as well as a diagram in the camera work column. For the second option where we pull the BG, we write BG hiki or BG pull, the direction where it is pulled to, and the speed of the move, 3 mm per frame. And again, we write the same thing in the timesheet. To figure out the speed you need to pull the background at, just measure the layout and do some simple math. We can also move a single or multiple animation layer or book using a slide. Here we have a boat on layer A with an accompanying effect layer on layer B, and I wanted to move screen left. On another piece of paper, I will draw the outline of the starting and ending position of the cell and label them with the Japanese katakana alphabet, A to E, as well as writing a small note saying A, B, cell, slide. In the timesheet, write a note in the memo, A, B, cell, slide, A to E, as well as a diagram in the can work column. Use an arrow to indicate the direction of the slide. In this case, the slide will last for the whole 5 seconds of the cut. You can also scale up and down or track up and back on an individual cell or book layer. This is usually called a digital track up or down or a layer track up or down. Here we have our character on the A cell layer and let's have her scale up. On a different piece of paper, I will draw the outlines of the character in the starting and ending position and label them with A and B. In the timesheet, we make a memo, A cell, digital track up, A to B, and draw a diagram in the camera work column like so. 
In this situation by itself, the digital track up doesn't make uh, much sense, but we can combine it with a camera move for some cool multiplane effects, which we will delve further into in the next part of this guide. So thanks for watching. You guys can follow me on Twitter or support me on Patreon if you would like. Anyways, see you guys next time.